But remember, when you're doing a past paper, it's not about just getting the answer right. The whole time when you're doing a past paper, to get that A star, you need to be thinking about what is the question really testing, and do I understand everything about it? So I'm just going to demonstrate that with this question. So we've got here a beam of ionizing radiation containing alpha particles, beta particles, and gamma rays is traveling left to right across a page. So what I want you to start training your brain to do is to access all the information you might need. Now, in a, in, when you actually come to do the test, you're not going to do all of this because this would be a massive waste of time. But while you're revising, Use it this way. So we've got this word beam. So we can think of a beam as like a straight line. It says of ionizing radiation. So when we think about an ionizing radiation, we think um, we could say something like collisions ionize molecules. So it might look something like this. Here's um, an atom with some electrons. Um, we could have a, an alpha particle coming in and then coming out the alpha particle might gain those electrons um, and becomes a helium nucleus or helium atom and that leaves behind a positive ion yeah with no electrons and then you might think why um, you know think when we think about this this is a problem because uh, if this happens in a cell Um, that can, let me just adjust the focus on here. Uh, if that happens in a cell, uh, can cause cancer. If it damages DNA, uh, or it can kill the cell. Yeah. Um, and it says containing alpha particles, so we should remember that alpha particle is a helium nucleus um, and it has the symbol 42HE or 42alpha. Um, I'm going to underline nucleus and remember there are no electrons. Beta particles, so I know that that is an electron um, and I would write it as 0, negative 1 beta or 0, negative 1 e minus. And gamma rays, that is a high energy EM wave. Um, and I would write that as 0, 0 gamma. It's traveling left to right across a page. So for this part, I'm going to start drawing a, um, a diagram. And it says I've got all three. So it's going left to right. It's going to look like that. And I've got some alpha, some beta, and some gamma. That's the situation in this question. A magnetic field. So I might want to say, well, what is a magnetic field? Um, if you remember our definitions... A magnetic field is um, a. Re How do you spell region? Is there an R E G I or R E I? R E G I. Thank you. Region of space um, where magnets experience a force. And there's loads of other facts you might remember about that. You might say um, closer lines mean a stronger field. You might remember that those lines, um, they go from north to south. When we're thinking about north to south, we might remember that north is usually red, south is usually blue, but it doesn't have to be. 
Um, you might say not positive or negative, because lots of people get that wrong. Uh, this is a magnetic field acts perpendicularly into the page. So we could say, well, that's going to look, it's going to go into the page. So I might draw it like this. Um, and then I could look at one of these arrows and say, remember, like a, like a dart. And I can say that across means into, a dot means out of. <coughs> In the table below, tick the boxes that describe the deflection. I might remember that deflection means bending of each of the types of radiations that passes through the magnetic field. So to do this, I'm going to have to use Fleming's left hand rule. Why left? Well, I can remember it's left because false is on the particle. Yeah. Um, when I'm also remembering this, I could remember that the thumb is the <laughs> thumb is the motion or the force first finger is the magnetic field second finger is the current now for this question it's quite important. When I think about current, I need to remember current is the direction from positive to negative. In other words, it is the direction that positive particles move. Now I'm thinking about positive and negative. Um, I'm going to add up here my alpha particles. It's a helium nucleus. And I'm going to just remember it has a plus 2e charge. Whereas, an elect whereas a, a, a beta particle has a minus e charge. And an EM wave has zero charge. So when I come back to this diagram, if I'm thinking about this, the alpha, um, the current for alpha is going left to right. The current for beta will be going left, right to left, even though the particles themselves are moving left to right. Because the direction of current is always the direction that positive particles move, for uh, the beta particles, they're going to move the other way. And then for my gamma, there is no current. Yeah, because it's uncharged. So then it becomes relatively easy. In this case, I need first finger into the page. So with my left hand rule, first finger into the page, second finger pointing uh, in the direction that I've drawn it. So uh, the alpha particle will be deflected towards the top of the page. I've checked and that's okay. Beta particles, first finger into the page, second finger down. So they're going to be deflected towards the bottom of the page. Gamma rays, I'm expecting no deflection. Then it says large deflection or small deflection. Um, so here's something else I could say. Alpha particles, they're a HE, HE nucleus, they're a plus two charge, and they are heavy. Whereas electrons, they're a minus E charge, and they are light. So because of that, beta particles will have a large deflection. And I can explain that by saying... Because they are light and F is equal to MA, I can say uh, small F, sorry, small M, 
Therefore, large A, I can say the false, uh, depends on charge and velocity of the particle. The faster they go, the more force there is on them. So I'm not going to do part B for now. I'm just going to look at that. So obviously, in the real exam, you are not going to do this. This would be insane. But when it comes to your revision, you should be able to do this for every question that you do. Almost every word in here means something, has some scientific value to you. So a really good exercise is just to practice. Rather than whizzing through past paper by past paper by past paper, really delve into one. Because now I've done this, I could say, right, well, were there any things that I was unsure about? Obviously, I am pretty good at physics by this point in my life, so I can do most of this from memory. When you guys do this, you're going to have to look it up. So there might be some stuff that you could do saying, for instance, let's make some flashcards. So here's a flashcard that I could make. Um, I could say, what is the notation for alpha? And on the back, I'm going to write, so when I see an alpha particle, I would write that as a 4 to HE. Or, or I suppose it's HE uh, 2 plus, or 4 to alpha. Yeah? And I might want to add to myself, it's uh, 2 protons, 2 neutrons, 0 electrons, might also say it's got a plus two charge um, and it's heavy, for instance. And that's going to be my flashcard. So in the future, I'm going to go through and say, what is notation for alpha? Do I remember what it is? OK, yes, I was right. Move on. Yeah, I could say in Fleming's left hand rule, what direction Uh, is current. So I would turn this note here into a uh, card. So I would say direction of positive charge. E.g. if an electron is going that way, current is going that way. Doesn't take long to make these flashcards, but when you use them for your revision, they're going to be really, really helpful for just saying, Do I remember all these key facts? Okay.